What is behind a laugh? <laughs> the truth is nothing. Making people laugh is one of the simplest art forms, one that requires a serious amount of inbred skill. Some say the best comedians are the truth sayers of modern day life. But what specifically are Canadian comedians offering today's audiences? How are they creating an avenue for generations of comics to come? When Jill Deegan was a wee little girl, her weirdness caught everyone's attention. As she grew older, people suggested that she take advantage of her comedic talent. At 17, she did just that and did her first stand-up show. Describe what your first show was like. I was, it was a lot, it was a little easier maybe when I was 17 because I had, um, you know, it was just like a high school coffee house and there wasn't really any huge pressure to be, to be funny, um, even though I really, really wanted to be funny because that was the whole point. So uh, I get up on stage and, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty nervous, but once I heard that first laugh, like it was like a weight was just lifted off my shoulders and I had, I was actually having fun, right? And then when, uh, many years later, uh, when I did my first Yuck Yucks set, uh, just as terrifying, um, but the, the terror didn't go away when I got that first laugh, like it stayed with me uh, through the whole set, like even afterwards when I got off stage, I was still shaking and vibrating away. It's a uh, it's it's really intense actually to be standing up on that stage with that light in your face and you know you're just hoping for the best basically but it's uh it's it's good to feel the fear you know it keeps you on your toes it keeps you humble okay is there something distinctive about Canadian comedy I think it's uh it's a lot more honest you know like a lot of Canadian comedians especially those who aren't really concerned about you know breaking into um the U.S. comedy industry that does have you know the most pull in the world not just for comedy but like movies music television whatever it's vastly controlled by uh the American media. Yeah, Canadians just keep it honest, you know, we like to do our own thing. I f you find more unique comics like from group to group, you know, like you have uh, the blue humor comedians and then there's your really dry comedians and like yeah, even things from like vaudeville and things like that. Like we're not afraid to uh, to dabble in, you know, a, a bit of a history lesson and pull that towards our own comedy. You like to to really make it stand out from everybody else's because that's that's kind of what Canada does in another way. Like we're always told we're America Junior, so we're always trying to hear, have our own voice heard and really bring something unique to the table. Is it really a, a talent that you're born with or can you polish and ground your way towards being a funny person? Um, no, I, I you can teach technique, but you can't teach funny you know like someone you can some anybody can tell a knock knock joke right but it's uh it takes an extra something to really you know send that joke over the top whether it's delivery or a face that you make um while you're telling the joke but yeah you really you need to be born with it you can't teach hilarity all right let's talk about the hardships of the comedy life uh, have you seen jamie kennedy's dvd called heckler uh no i haven't have you ever had to throw down against a uh, heckler um no i've been i've been pretty lucky i can recall like one stand-up set where i heard some like a joke didn't go over so well and I heard someone say something but I just kept going like I didn't draw attention to it because you know generally a heckler just wants attention like they want you to seek them out and uh but no I've I've seen people get heckled and it's but I think I could handle it when uh if it ever comes along oddly enough my next question is that the most terrifying thing for a comedian being heckled no I mean uh, having a heckler is a lot like uh you know getting teased right and like most comedians will tell you they come from a background where they were teased quite a lot as kids, but um, the worst thing, well, for me anyway, I can't really speak for everybody else, but I think most comedians would tell you that uh, the worst experience you can have is when a joke just falls flat on stage, like, and there's there's absolutely nothing but you and the crickets kind of thing. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Let's talk about the history of funny. Funny being a noun. I reckon certain things are funnier to different generations. Uh, what do you think controls age um, or racial uh, groups and what they find amusing? Be very similar to music, I guess. Like, again, the comedy is very subjective, right? What one person finds funny, someone else won't find funny. Like, uh, take it back to, you know, our grandparents and stuff who, um, you know, kind of grew up in the vaudeville 
times, right? And, you know, you show that to a 14-year-old today, and they're like, well, what the hell is what the hell is this crap? Like, nobody says penis even once. That's not funny. Whereas, you know, um, another 14-year-old would be like, this is genius. You know, it's like a, my parents, like my dad used to listen to a lot of vinyl and classic rock, and I love it. I was raised on that. And, you know, whereas a 13-year-old Lady Gaga fan might think I'm on crack for liking it. So it it depends on your mindset, Let's uh, let's switch gears a bit. Uh, Vanguard Comedy Theater is uh, quote the fastest growing home for all things funny. Uh, tell me when and how you became a part of this enterprise, and how you planned on contributing to it. Well, I was um, it was probably a couple of months ago. Um, what my roommate is a comedian as well, and she uh, she didn't go to Humber. She's based out of the Second City. Like went through all the classes there, and. Um, she she's very into improv and just mentioned to me one day that oh there's this company called Vanguard who's holding uh open auditions you should you should try out and at first I was like oh no I don't know about that you know like I might not be any good kind of thing and I had been uh, I hadn't done any kind of performing or anything since comedy school and the last time I auditioned was for Humber so uh you know but I shook it off and was like all I can do is try really so I went in there with my best and big grin on my face and did what I could and uh lo and behold they called me back and gave me a slot so Vanguard also spawned a face plant a sketch group based from that company it consists mm-hmm. of many individuals putting together sketches that seeks to entertain titillate and provoke thought it apparently works to enrich people's lives through the content of the shows how so What do people walk away with? People walk away happier than when they went in, and, you know, that's uh, that's all we're aiming for, really. Like, if someone comes into our show just having, like, the worst day possible, you know, like their bird died and there was no coffee at work and they stepped in dog crap or whatever, and then they come to the show, sit down for an hour, and completely forget about everything that happened. Like, that's, that's really all we're aiming for is just making people feel good. How did the troops first show go? Oh, it was it was great. It was more than uh, any of us hoped for. You know, we're all we're we were all quite critical of ourselves when it was over. It's like, oh, you know, I messed up this line, or the sound effects came in too early, or whatever. But overall, we were very very pleased and are really psyched about the next show because we're fine tuning uh, everything and you know rewrites and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a lot tighter and. Uh, smoother and we're all just jazzed to do it we can't wait what was uh, the audience's response like great actually they were all um listening very intently which was which was good um it was we had it at the blue moon pub and it was a night that um the canadians were uh playing against some sort of rival the american team i'm not quite sure who it was but uh so you have the, this curtain splitting the bar, and there's lots of you know background noise coming in from the hockey game, but it didn't really disturb anybody. Like everybody was still very focused on uh, what was going on. It's it's mixed, really. Like everybody, you know, loves to be on. Like we all love having a good show. You know, the audience is giving a great response or laughing and whatnot. But it's almost better motivation to have a bad night because. It allows you to step back and look at, you know, where the problem is. Like, is it in the writing? Is it in the performing? Like, maybe the audience just wasn't feeling it that night. Like, it, uh, it, it really depends. Like, it's well and you know, well and good to, uh, to be having a good night. But it's almost better for you if things don't go so well all the time. So walk me through um, what what happens during the show. What could the audience expect from these faceplant shows. Paint me a picture with your imagination brush. Go. <laughs> well, first of all, the sky is very blue. <laughs> um, audiences can uh, just expect to come and hang out with their friends, you know, have a beer, and worst case scenario, like, you'll laugh that night. So, you know, and they're usually free shows, so that ain't bad either. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'll just come out and have a good time, right? That's that's what we're all here for anyway, so. 